I'm actually a cybersecurity and data privacy partner in a global law firm, and I focus my work and research on data strategy and helping companies, CEOs, board members think through how to be amazing uh, with their technologies like AI. My, my first question kind of comes from at one in, on one hand, AI has been around since the 50s, right? The early 50s. On the other hand, people will say it's really only been around for 24 months since ChatGPT caught the world by storm and everybody started paying attention. How, how long have you been paying attention to, I guess, cyber for a while, but how about AI and cyber? Well, you know, it actually started in, and, and you're correct that uh, generate. What's new here is generative AI. Um, right. AI has been around for over 50 years, and we've dealt with it, and in terms of addressing privacy issues uh, for a very long time. And then, uh, if you look back at uh, California, which is always on the cutting edge of many things, uh, we had our California Chatbot Disclosure Act, which was in 2019. So helping companies there be transparent about um, their disclosures and uh, it, that letting people know that they're interacting with an AI. Oh, so when I go on to the AAA website and there's a little chat icon, chances are I'm dealing with a bot. And because I live in California, it'll say you're dealing with a bot in some clever way. Exactly. Precisely. Yeah, I, I actually prefer that. I get my work done a lot quicker when there's a, a robot helping in, in that instance. I'm curious, what is the biggest threat? I'm going to stay away from cyber for just a second. Mm -hmm. But what's the biggest um, governance issue, if you will, for big companies in AI? The biggest governance issue is making sure that AI reflects the brand, that uh, oh. it reflects everything the company wants it to reflect, just like an employee. So one of the things that I, I get asked a lot, because I've integrated um, my digital assistant, I like Ethan Molnick's dis, dis, uh, definition, he calls it co-intelligence. So I, I like that. Um, I've integrated it quite a bit. People have said to me, aren't you afraid of all of your writing being absorbed by the, the LLMs, by the robots? I know that big companies have rules against bringing chat GPT in for that exact reason. How are they working around that or what's the solution to that? Well, there's got to be policies and really it has to start from the top. Uh, safe and responsible and trustworthy AI is a tone that the CEO and uh, the board can establish in an organization. Making sure employees know uh, what to use uh, and what to place into AI so they're protecting things like strategic plans or uh, proprietary information is really important to raise that awareness. So uh, what I've heard is that you can you can have your data, your your own large language model. We all we're getting used to all these new words, aren't we? Um, you can have it inside your your company. I wouldn't. I'm it's too small, but I'm thinking of a of a large company. They can do that. So I know that that, and I'm going to figure out that IT professionals have figured out how to button that down so that's secure. Here's the question: These computers that run the AI are upwards of $100 million. Right. How, how are big companies, I mean, that's different than, you know, us deciding to switch with a certain vendor on, on our office tools, $100 million just for the iron. What, what are companies doing about that? So there's, I, I want to talk about two different camps. There are the companies that are licensing the large language models to integrate into their businesses. And many of them are uh, entering into pilot agreements first and then enterprise licenses that last over three years. And they're creating their own applications sitting on top of the large language model. So think of, you know, uh, company X GPT, uh, that's trained on the company's own data that is uh, not shared with the large language model. And the large language model is underneath like a, an ocean of data 
from the whole internet and um, the application sucks up those insights. So that's how that's happening. And the other? Where you're creating the large language model itself, the tech companies that are part of the whole ecosystem, either creating the cloud services or the AI tool uh, that has the algorithm like an open AI. Those folks, uh, those are significant uh, capital expenditures that are necessary to be able to uh, develop the product. So how worried are executives or how worried should we be? I, I almost want to have two camps. There, There's corporate and then there's small business and entrepreneurs and that. How worried should we, I'll use the royal we, be that all of this is in the cloud, even if I have a my own servers or my own protected things. So I have nothing on premise, everything's in the cloud. Should I be worried about security? Well, you know, security is always a concern, Mark, and uh, and this is why it's so important that uh, the users of AI think about what they are putting into mm. the chatbots and other services because uh, no company, no business is immune from data breaches, right. uh, we just, especially when we have tensions all around the world in national security, et cetera. Right. So let's let's talk about data breaches. It feels like there's there's probably more than two, but I, I think simple too. Uh, one is where they go in and they they just take stuff, they, you know, uh, credit cards and and passwords and and that kind of thing. And you hear about those. You're hearing about them less, but you, we still hear about them. How? I mean, and I I know some IT guys. They're just very, very smart. How is it that those things are still happening? How is it that big tech hasn't figured out how to put an iron door on data? So it's not as simple as an iron door. What it involves, and I talk about this in my uh, book, uh, Trust, Responsible AI, Innovation, Privacy, and Data Leadership, it's about governance, okay? Uh, the technology is uh, sort of um, neutral. What it requires of all of us, our CEOs, our boards, uh, the rank and file of folks doing the work to be aware of and be digitally savvy and aware of the risks that might arrive. Paying attention to, uh, you know, uh, not clicking on malicious links, uh, not looking to going to URLs and clicking on links where you don't know the sender of the email. Those are simple things but they have resulted in huge losses for companies uh, because of just those simple safety hygiene, uh, cybersecurity hygiene that needs to be in place. Well, then the other one that uh, is, is very troubling is the ransomware attacks. And so for someone who doesn't know what that is, why don't you explain what that is? Yes, yeah, so ransomware attacks are becoming much more prevalent and uh, they continue to be a, a source of loss for companies. What it, what it involves is uh, a business owner wakes up in the morning and uh, hears from, usually gets a report from an employee that they are frozen out of their systems. They cannot uh, access in important information all or part of their operating systems are immobilized. And instead of uh, getting the entry screen to put in their passwords and get into uh, the, the portals for work, they're seeing you know, sometimes skull and bones and you know, reach out to this uh, to chatbots, obviously, to negotiate a ransom to get access to their data. Uh, so this is a terribly disruptive practice uh, put together by criminals but it is having a tremendous impact, especially healthcare, financial, and our critical infrastructure. Well, that was the, that was the concerning part is um, healthcare when, you know, if we can't run our ICU and we can't run the emergency rooms and we can't dispatch, and then our financial systems, the fact that they can get at that, it almost, not almost, it feels like it's more than a business problem. It feels like it's a national security problem. You're absolutely right, Mark. This is, uh, you know, and Senator Schumer's report on AI just came out today and um, it touches exactly on this issue, uh, that this is uh, national security, uh, cybersecurity, privacy, all of these things are interwoven and um, the governance necessary to operate generative AI uh, is 
is all the more acute because of the risks that are there. In addition to the cyber attacks and the disruptions, um, you know, national security, our American companies are often targeted, especially when there are tensions all around the world uh, that impact our um, every aspect of our uh, infrastructure. So, yes. I, I'm guessing now that I think of it that there is a whole class of industries that don't report ransomware. I'm thinking of the military industrial complex, you know, Lockheed and Boeing and, you know, those kind of companies. We don't hear that because I think us thinking that there were, there's data breaches, it's that that's extremely troubling to me as a citizen that that happens. So, okay. So, so Senator Schumer puts out a report what yeah. kind of action can the government take? Because some people will say, well, the government, again, I understand governance, but criminals could care less about our governance. So how, how does that help us? Well, what governance does is it makes uh, the enterprise and the organizations that might be targeted more resilient. So mm -hmm. in terms of uh, generative AI, for example, governance, like risk ranking the AI, treating low risk different than high risk uh, continuously, every second of every minute of every day, monitoring and testing output to make sure that another risk isn't happening, that say the AI is wrong, okay? Uh, that's very important. Uh, so these are the sorts of things that uh, take a little bit of attention, not that expensive, but have a big difference in terms of outcome. Um, and I'll just leave with this one last point. Data breaches cost our global economy last year $6.1 trillion with a T dollars. We're expecting that generative AI is going to bring $7 trillion with a T to our global economy. And you can see how quickly these things can cancel themselves out if we don't pay attention uh, on all fronts. Which is why we're having this conversation. I think I asked you, what's the world, what's the idea the world needs to hear and why do they need to hear it now? And, and clearly you're the person to, to help us understand this. So as I'm thinking of, I've been in software my whole life and I'm thinking of the, not my developing, the developer stuff, but I'm thinking of my IT stuff, people that keep the trains running on time, keep all that's, that's their job is doing that. What have you seen in um, the universities that are training our up and coming IT people? Are they able to keep up with these risks that are facing us, um, whether they go to work, you know, at the NSA or they're working uh, in private industry. I mean, are we keeping up with it? Well, it's exciting because, you know, I was recently, I have a digital trust summit that I founded at Brown University oh. and uh, large language model experts, uh, generative AI uh, professors that have advised the White House and so forth are explaining and uh, bringing this information up to the students that mm -hmm. the AI is um, governance is necessary. And a lot of the things that they are calling for to address uh, something that's very important, which is model drift. Uh, the the Ooh, key what's point. What's that? Oh. I, uh, I like new words. So I love that. What's model drift? This is a phenomenon of uh, that is true with every generative AI model that it will drift from uh, because it's powered by the whole wide internet and that we are generating 2.5 quintillion bytes of data per day. Uh, so that is flowing in and adding to the internet. So when we build applications on top of uh, the generative AI models that are uh, licensed from the tech companies, testing once a quarter is not enough or testing once a month is not enough because all of this roiling data is coming in with insights that will uh, cause the model to drift. Recently, a CEO of a company woke up in January with uh, the, the name of the company trending on uh, X, formerly Twitter, because a chatbot that had been working perfectly and it helped thousands of customers 24-7 to know when their packages were going to arrive and so forth. Suddenly, a customer asked a very simple question, you know, where can, when can I expect my package? And uh, 
instead of getting the normal answer, uh, it's on this date, et cetera, the chatbot came out with an expletive laden screed against the customer, then went on to criticize the company and uh, blame the company for letting go its real customer service representatives and leaving uh, the company with this useless chatbot. So uh, that's why it's so important. What what had, uh, you know, the uh, chatbot was not starting out cursing at customers, otherwise it wouldn't have been deployed. Uh, the issue was that there was not continuous testing, monitoring, and auditing of output and a, an actual guardrail about what an accurate uh, customer service call needs to look like uh, for that company. And that's that's worth it when they talk about governance. That's the type of thing that mm. needs inserted into the AI in terms of code and so that the company can be alerted the very first time a, a chatbot starts, you know, cursing at its customers, for example. So the robots need to monitor the robots. <laughs> I'm afraid so, yes. So it's like when when you do call and get a human and they say this call is being monitored for whatever, you know, the, whatever their the legal words are, that it's almost the same thing with the chatbots for for the exact same reason if one goes off the rails. Now, in that particular example, I have a couple of minutes here. Uh, in that particular example, did somebody insert something to make it do that? Or did it do that on its own? This is the way that uh, AI works. It did it on its own. Uh, and then later, you know, the, it, it was easily uh, prompted to write a haiku poem about how, how terrible it thought the company was, et cetera. Um, it went on for so long that the the customer was able to videotape uh, this happening on his iPhone and then went ahead. And first thing that the customer did, which I do believe in our people, I do uh, think that people trust or want to trust companies with this technology. The first thing that uh, the customer did was write to the company uh, to say, look, this is this is the cursing that I did receive, et cetera, so forth. I want to make sure others aren't impacted. It just, uh, nobody responded uh, for 48 hours. So in frustration, he jumped on to um, X. So what we want to do is with governance, make sure that AI can be trustworthy to our customers, to our business partners, by taking the steps necessary to implement uh, common sense governance. Let me put it a different way, Mark. You know, we do quality control and product testing on uh, pretty much every major product of any company. They're not going to let it go out the door uh, without that control. We've got to do that with AI so that humans are controlling AI, not the other way around.